that Kevin Keegan decided it was to be his last game. And that turned St James's Park into a cauldron of excitement and raw emotion. Your commentator, Alan Parry. After 16 years of unprecedented success, Kevin Keegan makes his final journey as a professional footballer and the Geordies have prepared a memorable goodbye. Football League. His remarkable career, which began in the unfashionable setting of Scunthorpe in the fourth division, has since taken him to glory with Liverpool, with Hamburg, Southampton, and finally here at Newcastle. He's won just about every major honour in the game and has thrilled supporters wherever he's played. And fittingly, Keegan bids farewell on a successful note because he's helped this Newcastle team to win back a place in the first division after an absence of six years and to win it back in style, scoring 82 goals along the way. Keegan takes his usual place as captain despite the head injury which forced him to miss his only game this season at Huddersfield on Monday. But at this stage last season, Brighton were still in the first division themselves and were looking forward to appearing in the FA Cup final. But since then, no fewer than five of the team which went to Wembley and lost and suffered relegation have all left along with former manager Jimmy Melia. The new man Chris Catlin has done a sound job of rebuilding and today feels an attacking lineup because he says Brighton wants to play their part in making Keegan's farewell a memorable one. And how appropriate that for the final time as a league captain Kevin Keegan should be shaking hands with an old teammate and an old pal. Jimmy Case they were together in the European Cup final winning side in 1977 at Liverpool, sharing a joke. And also that presentation made on behalf of Brighton and hardly room for the coin to make the toss. Arthur Cox, the Newcastle manager, one of the men responsible for bringing Kevin Keegan to Tyneside. So Brighton kick off this historic match and as you sample the quite unique atmosphere, here at St James's Park, you wonder how British football, let alone Newcastle United, will ever replace Kevin Keegan. The referee is Ken Wormsley of Blackpool on a quite glorious day, fitting for the occasion. The early free kick played in towards Connor, but Kevin Carr firmly setting Newcastle, who are attacking from right to left, underway with Truett. The pitch green and in perfect condition. Arthur Cox, as ever, urging greater effort, even though Newcastle are safely in the first division, and as far as the league table is concerned, this is a game that doesn't matter. Raider. Look for McDermott. Having never been one of Terry McDermott's strong points, he would agree. Here's Waddle. Funny shot. Good save by Corrigan. And Waddle again. Away by Connor, but only as far as Beardsley. Can he finish? C Corrigan got down again. So did Eric Young. And in the end, it scrambled for a corner. But it was the shot by Waddle which started all the danger. Firmly struck, and Corrigan made a very good save. There's Beardsley. Well, somehow he came out with the ball. Alan Young took it off him. Now Jones. Ryan. Good challenge that was by McDermott. Here's Case. Wharton intercepted. Which is what he did because Alan Young was in a good position on the right. An enormous kick by Kevin Carr, but Pierce. 
was right underneath it. Anderson now for Newcastle. The crowd willing this goal. Keegan, Beardsley, wobble. It's hit the post and Keegan! He's done it! Courtesy of the upright, Kevin Keegan has signed on with a goal. That's what the Geordies wanted. Keegan gets his 28th goal of the season. He it was who helped it on to Beardsley. Wobble shot, tipped against the post. Keegan on hand to snatch it. 1-0 to Newcastle United, and the fairy tale ending is on its way to being complete. In his 500th league game, Kevin Keegan scores his 171st league goal. And a fiction writer could not have bettered this. Kevin Keegan, who first played league football 16 years ago as a 17-year-old, helping Newcastle into the lead, and what a shot it was that really produced the opening. The Geordie fans ecstatic. Jones forward. Rhoda's header comes to Wilson. And Connor and Mark on the far side of the area. Brought it down well. Ryan is there, and Alan Young, and Connor again, and still Ryan. Now, did that cross the line? What total confusion! The Brighton players are claiming that Ryan shot crossed the line when it came down off the bar, but the referee has said play on. Good ball, McDermott. Keegan's in the middle. Well, all the fans around me thought that that was handball. And then again, they're all wearing black and white scarves. Connor battling away with Wharton. Pace for Brighton. First time ball, a good one. On it goes towards Ryan. And what a mistake by the defender. Rhoda slipped as the ball was played in by Alan Young. Ryan had the easiest job of all to slot it into the net and bring the score back level again. Newcastle won, Brighton won. Rhoda admitting that it was his mistake, his slip, which opened up such an easy opportunity for Jerry Ryan. Newcastle won, Brighton won, just a couple of minutes before half-time, and that has dampened the enthusiasm, rather, of the majority of people at St. James's Park. But Brighton have said all along, whilst they don't want to spoil Kevin Keegan's party, they are intent on playing their part in the match too. And of course, that's exactly what they've got to do, as Jones brings down through it. There's Keegan, Beardsley, hit him on the uh, foot, and Eric Young intercepted. That's half-time, and Kevin Keegan gave this set-out 37 crowd what they wanted with that goal after 22 minutes. He's been lively, effervescent. He seems to have enjoyed it. They certainly have enjoyed his contribution. But Ryan, four minutes before half-time, spoiled things a little as far as the first half is concerned by scoring an equaliser for Brighton. But he only spoils it for Newcastle. Brighton are in this game yet and with a vengeance. Could go either way in the second half. 1-1 at the end of it. Well, there's a familiar face, another great hero at St. James's Park. Jackie Milburn, war Jackie, who was 60 yesterday, now a journalist up here on Tyneside, and a man who admires what Kevin Keegan has done for this club as much as anyone on the terraces today. So Keegan helps to set Newcastle underway in this second half with that one-goal lead. A difficult swirling wind has rather spoilt this being the spectacle that everyone had hoped for, so far anyway. Newcastle, remember already sure of promotion to the first division. We made that so with a draw at Huddersfield on Monday. 
and beaten Derby 4 0 here last Saturday. Truick. In it comes again to Keegan. And a fine cross to Wobble. Oh, yes! Keegan proves, as he has done so often through his career, he's not just a scorer of goals, he's a creator too. An immaculate twist and cross by Keegan from the left. And how well Wobble rose to head it in off the foot of the post. So Keegan scored one and made one for this boy. And Newcastle are back in front, two goals to one. Waddles, 18th of the season. A lovely moment of high skill from two fine players, one of whom is ending his career, another in the case of this young man, Chris Waddle, who's just beginning what could be an outstanding career. the only goal back at Brighton in December it's been a great success since coming from non-league football three and a half years ago and Keegan has brought the best out of him as he has so many of these Newcastle players Connor looked to be offside but the referee has said play on and he ought to have scored well there's anger and argument between Newcastle defenders it certainly looked as the ball slipped between Roder and Carney that Connor was in an offside position the flag stayed down he went on and hit his shot wide Eric Young to Connor Jones Ryan's flick here's Wilson for Brighton on towards Alan Young difficult for Anderson here he got in a mess Alan Young has turned and appealed and gets the corner. But confusion then between Anderson and Kevin Carr, although really it was difficult in a swirling win with such a high bouncing ball, and Alan Young won the corner. Oh, it's Connor! And he hit the upright and it's turned back and Gatton turns it wide. Well, that really ought to have been the equaliser again. That corner floated over towards the far post. Connor getting up so strongly, it hit the woodwork, came back, and Gatting from close to goal hit his shot wide. Dermot. Here's Alan Young, though. Ryan takes over, looks to feed Connor, who's got real pace. Hit him on the knee and he went in rather dangerously on the goalkeeper. Obviously a forward has to try and reach a ball like that, but really Kevin Carr had come down and it was dangerous because it was his face that was involved. Connor showing terrific pace to get between and ahead of the defenders. But his enthusiasm got the better of him rather. Wilson it's scrappy in the middle of the field Connor has gone down injured from his own collision with the goalkeeper there's Anderson for Newcastle and Waddle all the way back to Connor Connor still in agony Pierce, Wharton and Truick, Wharton again, Keegan, every twist and turn away is Truick, Beardsley on the left, and another bizarre corner, the outcome and that will enable Brighton to uh, get their physio on for treatment. The referee's turned his back on the game, and Connor, who's now on his feet, will receive treatment from Mike Gatsby, the physio. And Terry Connor has to limp off. He came off worst in that collision with goalkeeper Kevin Carr. 
and will play no further part in the game, I think. Neil Smiley has warmed up, but hasn't yet been introduced, as the corner is taken by Newcastle. And, indeed, Neil Smiley now comes on, and will Brighton's FA Cup final side of score, of course, and he scored against uh, Middlesbrough in their 3-0 home win on Monday. Five minutes to go. Newcastle 2, Brighton 1. Carney with the clearance. Getting with a spectacular attempt to clear, but it drops for Beardsley and Keegan. And Beardsley again. And Beardsley still. Oh, magnificent! What a great goal by Peter Beardsley! And that is rounding it off in style. And Kevin Keegan would have been proud of that one himself. What a great goal. Everyone in this ground are on their feet. Beardsley showing magnificent skill and it looked as though the chance had gone. Keegan fed in. Eric Young with the tackle. It looked as though it had gone away from him. What presence of mind he showed to just lift the ball over Joe Corrigan and into the net. Well, that's one of the best goals I've seen for a very long time. So, this massive crowd celebrates a great goal and another win. 36,415 here. The average attendances at St James's Park have been around 30,000 this season. Kevin Keegan has helped to bring them back into this famous old ground. And players like Peter Beardsley hopefully will keep them coming next season in the first division. When Keegan has gone into retirement. The perfect ending to this game. Well, practice not over, because here goes Keegan again. A breathtaking goal by Beardsley. This is Carney. Keegan is in the centre circle, still wanting the ball, even in the final few seconds of his career personifying his enthusiasm, his willingness to help others, and his total involvement in the game. And the crowd have only one name on their lips. It's this man, Keegan. Getting for Brighton. Leading the counter-attack. Ryan on the right. Crowd have forgotten the game now. They're just providing a fitting farewell to Kevin Keegan. Rhoda back to Wharton. Up it goes towards Keegan. Case gets there first, and that's the final whistle and the final chapter in one of the most remarkable and moving stories in English football history. Kevin Keegan, after 16 years and 500 league games, has rounded off his career in the style which literally made him the hero and the great player he is. Everyone in St James's Park standing to applaud their congratulations. The Brighton players going to shake Keegan's hand and the Newcastle players too playing their part in these scenes of great emotion. Everyone in the stand on their feet now. The photographers as usual surrounding the little man with the familiar number seven jersey and Kevin Keegan who's graced the game says farewell I'm sure there will be more scenes and another lap of honour from Kevin Keegan but as far as league footballers concerned that's the end the match ended in a 3-1 victory Keegan scored a goal made a goal and had a part in a quite magnificent third goal scored by Peter Beersley Ryan getting one back for Brighton, the full-time score, Newcastle United 3, Brighton 1, the crowd being urged to stay on their places on the terraces because there will be a final lap of honour from Kevin Keegan before he says what I'm sure will be a tearful farewell. And the crowd did stay in their place and enabled everyone to enjoy that very special occasion, but no one more than their idol Kevin Keegan, for Kevin, I'm sure, will never forget the day the Geordies said thank you.
Kevin, fantastic scenes. If you could have written a finish like that, you could hardly have bettered it, could you? No, it's been fantastic. Very, very emotional. And, uh, well, I mean, just very difficult to hold yourself together under circumstances like this, you know, when, but uh, very moving. And I thank everyone up here for the tremendous way they've not received me over the last two years and, and the way they've seen me off. It's, it's been very nice and made it all, from my point of view, very worthwhile. To actually end up with a goal as well in your final game. Terrific. Well, I think you could have scored that one, Alan, but it was... Uh, Steady. Whoever, <laughs> whoever wrote the script got it right. I was desperate to score a goal, you know, but, um, you know, tremendous... Uh, thing for the city of Newcastle, for the people. They've waited a long, long time, and uh, they're the best. There's no doubt about that. And uh, the first division needs people like that. You know, 37,000 in the ground. I think you tried to shake hands with every one of them at the end, didn't you? I wish I could have done. You know, it's impossible to shake. I must have shaken uh, shake hands with about half of them. And uh, I just wanted to thank them from the bottom of my heart, for, as I say, for the way they've received me and my family. And they're just super people. And uh, I've, I've been. I suppose the only regret I've ever had in football is that. They never saw me at my peak. I would have loved to have played here at my peak. You know, I mean, I'm just a little bit over the top now. Yeah, you, you've always said you're unemotional, but there were tears at the end, weren't there? Yeah, well, it's never, you know, um, it's difficult. I hope whatever I've given Tyneside, and, you know, praise has been showered on me this last few weeks, it's given me a hundred times as much. It gave me a boost when I needed it most after the World Cup, and, and I just thank the people up here. And uh, I hope I'm always their friend. I can tell them one thing, they'll always be my friends up here, you know. I thank them very much. A credit to football in every way and I'm sure we've not seen the last of Kevin. His manager Arthur Cox said this afternoon he was irreplaceable and in a promotional sense it would be very difficult to follow that perfect marriage between Kevin and Newcastle. But I wonder whether he's left a legacy in passing on his special qualities and attitude to young Peter Beardsley. Abundantly talented, not a giant either and his goal today suggested he might have what it takes to follow the little master. Carney with the clearance. Getting with a spectacular attempt to clear, but it drops for Beardsley. And Keegan. And Beardsley again. And Beardsley still. Oh, magnificent! What a great 